the story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. This is the story of a wee little boy who has just turned six, and his name is Jonathan Thomas. And what happened to him is not just fiddlesticks, for right here's where we make the promise. It could have happened to you if you were not you, but instead were Jonathan Thomas, who said his prayers every night upstairs and jumped into bed clear up to his head and snuggled and juggled and ruggled and chuggled because <laughs> Christmas was not very far off and was as good as he could, as all other boys would, if Christmas were coming so soon. For if he was bad and not merry and glad, his dad would not like such a lad and be sad and even a bit mad and not read fairy tales in his room where the moon disgustingly listened to his weepings and wails. But here is the story, and it's true, don't you worry. Because remember, I made you the promise. It's as true as true blue and could have happened to you if it hadn't happened to Jonathan Thomas. You see, the big grandfather clock in the hall had just struck eight, and Jonathan Thomas had had his bath and said his prayers and kissed Mummy and Nan and then taken the hand of his dad and up the stairs they went. One, two, button your shoe, three, four, shut the door. Until they were to where you say... Eleven, twelve, the kitchen shelf. And then down the hall and in the room and whisk into bed. <laughs> now, 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 now. Now pull the covers up so you won't catch the sneezles. Daddy. What is it? Mommy said if I were to brush my teeth four times, four times, four times, four, you were to speak a story. Well, now, and did you brush your teeth that many times? Uh-huh. Then what shall the story be about? About Jonathan Thomas and Gus. Jonathan Thomas and Gus? Uh-huh. Well, once upon a time... There was a little Wait, boy. wait, wait, Daddy. Hmm? Gus has got to hear, too. He oh. can't if he's under the giver. Oh, oh, well, then, by all means, we must haul him out from under the covers. But Gus would be as angry as angry as angry if he didn't hear the story. And he'd probably cry until his sawdust got wet. Ah, uh, there now. Eh? Ah, let's sit him up on the pillow. And we'll twist one ear a little further forward so he'll have no difficulty in hearing. Now, then, are we ready? Uh-huh. Once upon a time, there was a wee little boy who had just turned six. And his name was Jonathan Thomas. And he had a beautiful stuffed teddy bear named Gus. And one night, when Jonathan Thomas went to bed, away upstairs, after he'd brushed his teeth, and when he was tucked in with Gus by his side, and when he was asleep, a long, slender moonbeam made of pure silver came through the window. Like that. And down the moonbeam came sliding two of the queerest creatures you ever did see. Like that. And there they were, laughing and chuckling and giggling and poking their fingers at Jonathan Thomas, who was sound as sound as sound asleep as he could ever be. But right away, quick as 46 tigers, Gus opened his left eye. And then his right eye. And he saw the creatures. And then he opened his mouth and went. And he jumped from the bed right after those creatures. And those creatures ran up the moonbeam. And Gus ran after them, barking like everything or woofing or whatever koala bears do. And all this noise woke up Jonathan Thomas. And he saw Gus running up the moonbeam. And he jumped right out of bed and right up the moonbeam after Gus, shouting as loud, as loud as ever he could. Gus, Gus, come back. Maybe I'd better knock on this door. Oh, hello. Uh -oh. Well, goodness gracious, my land and Jiminy Crickets. Whatever do you mean by knocking on my door when the sign plainly says absolutely no knocking until after nine o'clock daylight saving moon time? Where are you? I, I mean, who are you? I don't see your name written on you anywhere. Well, speak up, speak up, speak up, speak up. Or has the cat got your tongue? 
If he has, we'll write him a letter and tell him to bring it back straight away quicker than you could say Jack Robinson. Yuck! <coughs> oh, you're not silly of me. <laughs> if the cat really got your tongue, you couldn't say Jack Robinson, could you? My name is Jonathan Thomas. Jon- oh, what a silly name. Thomas and Jonas. <coughs> oh, there, never mind. We can't all have beautiful names like Squam Boozle or Flim Fuddle, can we? <laughs> I had a grandfather once. Have you seen Gus? If I say, don't change the subject. Who's Gus? He's my teddy bear, and he ran away. Well, then why don't you go there and look for him instead of pestering me? Don't stand there in the doorway. Either come in or stay out. Yes, you'll have to do one or the other, you know. You can't do both at the same time. It's against the law. If you please, sir, I'll come in. What a silly thing to say, young man. It's not if I please, but if you please. <laughs> yeah. Have you had your breakfast? Oh, no, sir. I'm... Well, then, then, then who did have it if you didn't? No one, I don't think. You mean no one you do think. For if no one did have it instead of you, you'd know it. And if I were you, I shouldn't let no one have it again. Mr. No One's getting entirely too many breakfasts lately. Yep, 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 yep. Will you have breakfast with me? Oh, I should like that very much if you don't mind. Well, of course, I don't mind, except for old King Cole. Yeah, and I have to mind him or he'll throw me in jail for a billion trillion years. And then, uh, what would you like for breakfast? Oh, I'd like just anything. Well, I haven't got any of that. You shouldn't go around wanting things that people haven't got. Yep. Well, I can give you uh, oatmeal, morridge, and cream, and some squaffles and uh, bacon eggs. Oh, Thank you very much. That sounds the bestest of anything. Well, of course it does. <coughs> yep, 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 yep. I don't think uh, I like anything very well myself much. Unless it's cooked just right. <laughs> well, now, come along. It'll be too late for breakfast. You'll have to eat lunch instead. That's what we do. Oh, I'm as full as two times two. That was the best of breakfast I ever ate. Oh, but I wish Gus was here. Do you think we could find him? Well, well, I suppose we can. <laughs> if you know where he is. But I don't know. Well, then how on the moon do you expect to find him if you don't know where he is? Of course, it might be that the Squibblims have him. Who? Only owls say, who? Haven't you ever heard of the Squibblims? They're always catching something. A long time ago, they caught little Bo Peep's teeth. And they never brought him back. And only last Tuesday, I had a cold. Oh, it was a beautiful cold. And they caught that. And I haven't seen it since. <gasps> They're the most dreadful people. Are they? Oh, you think they caught guns? Well, I shouldn't be at all surprised. But I sometimes am. Oh, I hope not. Because next to my mummy and dad, I love guns the best. Yeah. Shh. Do you hear anything? Of course I do. There's somebody at the door. Oh, my goodness, I thought so. Now I'll have to say come in, for I can't say stay out, for whoever it is is already out. So I'll have to say come in. Well, can't you just say nothing at all? I don't know. I've never tried. What does it mean? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I'll just have to say come in. Yes, I will, yes, I will, yes, I will. Come in! Oh, so it's you, is it? Yep. Well, what do you wish? And uh, you can't have more three wishes. If you please, uh, Mr. Man in the Moon, I have brought great news. Well, let me see it. I have come to tell you that you had better hide, because the wretched, wretched sweet bubbles are coming. <sighs> and now I have to go and tell everybody else. Goodbye. <sighs> Oh, my goodness, my goodness, the squeeze bubbles are coming. Oh, this is terrible. Come quickly, Jonathan Thomas. We must hide ever so fast or they'll catch us. Where will we hide? Well, right here, of course. Where do you suppose? If the squeeze bubbles come into this room, just shut your eyes and don't make a sound. Don't we have to hide somewhere? No, because somewhere is too far to go and we haven't time. Just shut your eyes. Can't they see us if we shut our eyes? Of course they can. Who ever heard of such a thing? You can't see them, can you, with your eyes shut? No. Well, then how can they see us if we can't see them? I'd like to know... Uh Uh-oh. My goodness, my goodness. Here they come, here they come, here they come. Now, don't forget. Shut your eyes and don't make a sound. All right. I won't. Oh. Oh. One more thing. If they should ask if anyone's here, tell them no. Shut your eyes now, quick. Can you see anyone in here, General? Oh, I can't see a soul. They must all be hiding. Oh, you'd better ask and see. Yes, sir. 
Is anyone in here? No, no. <laughs> we haven't seen him all day. Oh, well, thank you very much. You're extremely welcome. Uh, there's no one here, General. You might as well leave. Oh, uh, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, my goodness. That was a narrow escape. So narrow I could hardly squeeze through it. Well, you can open your eyes now, Jonathan Thomas. Didn't they see us? Of course not. How could they? You had your eyes shut all the time, didn't you? Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. There's more of it. Come in. Quick, 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 quick. Where are we? The sweep of William have kidnapped Santa Claus. Kidnapped Santa Claus? And we must watch to rescue him right away. Quick, where Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Hurry, Jonathan Thomas. We must rush to the rescue. Santa Claus has been kidnapped. Oh, and there won't be any Christmas unless we rescue him. Come on, Jonathan Thomas. We must hurry like everything, only faster. <laughs> isn't very long until Christmas, and Santa Claus has been kidnapped. Will Jonathan Thomas and the Man in the Moon be able to find him in time? And what about Guz? Where is he? Don't forget to listen to the next adventure of Jonathan Thomas.